All right, guys, I thought I'd take you on a quick tech tour. Um, we are a portable church, and there was a lot of videos on the uh, ATEM gear, but a lot of questions weren't answered for me, so I thought maybe I'd throw together a quick video, see if this might help you guys. I have the ATEM Television Studio HD, which is then running into the HyperDeck, the new HyperDeck Mini HD that takes the two SD card slots, really like that. And then out of the HyperDeck, we're going into the Web Presenter HD. Um, we're using Pro Presenter 7, and we're sending uh, key and fill out channels uh, 7 and 8. And we previously were using Pro Presenter to do our streaming and, you know, our lyric overlays, but quickly found out the limitations of that. With no additional output, you're kind of stuck inside the box, not to mention the encoder is just not as good as this. If you've ever noticed, you know, your stream looking a little jumpy or almost like it's got a matrix effect is what I call it. It's probably because your streaming encoder is not, you know, a dedicated hardware encoder like the Blackmagic Designs Web Presenter HD. That being said, I'm going to kind of walk you through maybe some routings and maybe some ideas. I've got a single camera plugged in right now. Um, and by the way, while I'm thinking of it, the Mars Pro 300 wireless unit, we use that, it will convert to 29.97. Now, I haven't tried different frame rates because that's what we're using, but I'm assuming so. Um, there was a post saying that it's right at 30 and it wouldn't work. That's actually not true. I've tested it with two different cameras, the uh, Panasonic G85 and the Panasonic HCX1, which is kind of a broadcast style pan camera, both send out 29.97. We've had no issues going into the switcher. So that's kind of the, I talked through the main setup. There's our key and fill that we just leave the cables in here and they'll go out to the Decklink Duo, which is how we're doing our graphic overlays outside of ProPresenter. We're using ProPresenter to do it and you get all the features of it without having to um, just keep it in the box. One thing that's interesting, there's not much information on. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's see if I can turn the light on. But this guy right here, this is a Switchcraft four channel. Oh, what do you, what do they call it? It's basically a Dante device that shows up on the Dante network as four XLR inputs. Now what's great about Dante, I know a lot of people have heard of it, is you can go anywhere on an existing network or new network and send audio pretty much to anywhere from anywhere. So from our streaming computer, where we run a Dante network, which we have a switch right there, it's pretty dark in the rack. From that switch, um, we send out everything, our ATEM control, our, our uh, what else we have, other Dante devices. And on the Dante network, this guy shows up and it's a four channel, like I said, four channel output. And we just assign the two outputs from our live stream computer, which we're mixing in logic. And we send it to XLR, right? Straight into the switcher. And it's super clean audio and it's balanced all the way. And what's great about us, one of the advantages to mixing in a box, of course, outside of all the plugins and the different things you can do, is we don't have to have a delay because the audio is already delayed pretty heavily from mixing inside the software because we run a 1024 sample buffer, which gives us almost dead on audio because one of the disadvantages of the ATEM Television Studio HD is it does not include a delay for your audio. So to keep everything in sync, which for us works out great because we don't have to use a delay because, like I said, we're mixing logic. If you have to use a delay, you can use an external one to work fine. But yeah, we just come, audio comes in here straight into the switcher. We've got key and fill, of course, all your inputs and outputs. And then uh, we just come out of the program out. There's my HyperDeck into the HyperDeck. And it reclocks every time you, re you send it. So in other words, if you have to run long distances, it kind of gives you a reboost, if you will, to give you another 300 feet, but obviously we're, we're just going a foot and a half right up to the web presenter. And then, uh, yeah, out to Streamland. Inside the web presenter, we've got all our YouTube and all that stuff. So I'm going to take you inside the software. I'm going to show you one more thing that's helped us tremendously with the audio routing, 
inside pro presenter um, so I'll be right back I'm inside the ATEM software control nothing new here there's plenty of information uh, out here I've relabeled my buttons key and fill um, to designate you know channel 7 and 8 that's coming in pro presenters got a great tutorial on how to set that up and honestly we just leave it on air all the time so that the downstream key is basically controlled through ProPresenter through all the looks. Um, that's a real powerful feature in ProPresenter 7. But what I wanted to show you specifically is kind of an issue we were trying to work through. So we're in the audio section of the ATEM software control, and you can see that my fill signal, which is your full screen signal coming from ProPresenter or your computer on ProPresenter, I've got that microphone on. And the reason I've got it on is because all the audio from our announcement videos, you know, pre-service music, anything like that, will come through this channel, right? So essentially, we don't have to run any extra audio cables to have sound in both front of house and online. Inside ProPresenter, let me see if I can pull this up for you. Uh, let's pull it up real fast because I actually just thought of it. Inside ProPresenter, you have an option to enable SDI. So if you're sending SDI out the DeckLink Duo, let me get in here, ProPresenter, real quick and uh, give you a look-see. All right. So if you notice, I've got system setting here for the main, but also you have SDI and NDI. If you click Enable, you can route those two channels to anywhere on your SDI well, if you want to call it a network, but anywhere, anywhere SDI is being sent out. So for us, SDI is coming out of the computer, essentially, and coming into the fill channel online. So that, that way we don't have to run an extra cable or some crazy routing to be able to send audio both out of front of house, which you saw as our system setting, as well as online. So all our mix is done inside of, um, like I said, Logic, and it's coming through this XLR connection here. But when we go to run an announcement video or a promo video after worship or before worship, we simply turn on this. And you can actually leave this mic. It's a clean digital signal. You can leave it on. So far, we found no issues with it. But you simply turn this on. And now your video is completely in sync with your audio. And it's both being played on your online for your online audience as well as in person. Um, so that takes care of the sync issue because both the video and audio are coming down the, this SDI channel and inside the ATEM uh, software control, television studio, we have just enabled this to come through. He simply m mutes from his end the logic uh, stuff coming in on the XLR channel. Now if you're doing this from a board, you could simply turn it off here. You could mute it on the board. There's multiple ways to turn these on and off. But what we found is by running it through the fill, all your video is in sync. Otherwise, if we ran this audio into this XLR channel with all the delay we've got on it to make our live mics sync up, it would be heavily delayed and your audio and video would be out of sync for all your videos. Anyway, it's gone kind of long. Hopefully this was a tip. If you guys have any questions, uh, drop them in the comments. Um, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to build it out. I'm not doing it for any other reason. Uh, not trying to get anything out of it, but if I uh, just enjoy this stuff and hopefully it'll help you guys.